Hi, this is Gijsbert from Ingenious Technologies and today we are going to talk about third-party tracking. We have two goals with this video. First, we will explain you what third-party tracking is. Second, we would like to show you the different types of third-party tracking and their value for your partners. What we won't discuss in this video is how to implement these different types of third-party tracking on the Ingenious Enterprise platform. For this, we have created a separate video. So, first of all, what is third-party tracking? We speak of third-party tracking when an external tracking application is triggered via your platform. In most cases, this external tracking system will be used by the partners on your platform. When I say partner here, I mean partners in the broadest sense of the word. Not just individual affiliates, but also retargeters, ad brokers, paid search campaigns or affiliate networks. All these different partners may have good reasons to work with their own tracking systems. Some may want to use them to track customer behavior. Others may want to measure the success of their advertising campaigns. And others will want to share data with their own partners or affiliates. To do all of this, they need different types of third-party tracking. First, we need to make a distinction between third-party tracking that is triggered unconditionally and third-party tracking that is triggered only when a conversion is allocated to a partner. Third-party tracking triggered unconditionally works via codes enclosed in the container of the so-called on-page tracking code. This on-page tracking code is implemented on all pages of your advertiser's website. In most cases, these codes will be JavaScript that transmits data containing the behavior of potential customers on the advertiser's website. What products are potential customers looking at? Did they search for specific offers or browse the shop categories? Is the user already a customer or a first-time buyer? The answers to these questions are highly valuable information, in particular for partners who work with retargeting. So that's for the codes that are triggered unconditionally. Now let's talk about the codes that are only triggered when a conversion, such as a sale, a lead or a newsletter subscription, is allocated to the partner that registered the code. These conversions are tracked by the conversion tracking code. Via this conversion code, third-party tracking codes can be triggered as well, either via a container or via the tracking server. There are two different types of code that can be triggered by the conversion tracking code. Let's start with the most advanced option, JavaScript. JavaScript reads information from the confirmation page and in some cases even reorders this information and adds additional elements. A very simple use case is post-transaction marketing. The information received via the JavaScript allows a partner to offer related products to the customer automatically. Some retargeters use JavaScript to make sure they do not target customers for products they had already bought. Please note that if partners want to enclose a JavaScript in the container on the conversion tracking code, they will have to ask for your permission. The other type of code that is triggered by the conversion tracking code is a callback code. Unlike JavaScript, a callback code merely transmits information about the conversion. For their part, callback codes are divided in two types, depending on the delivery method of the callback code. First, we have image codes. Image codes are the most basic form of third-party tracking. They are fired via the container of the conversion tracking code and are commonly used to connect conversion data with a sub-ID, which partners attach to the tracking URL of the ad media. Via the sub-ID, partners can identify any click on an ad media item. Being able to connect the conversion with the click is very important for partners who buy their own traffic, for example via Google Ads. It allows them to optimize their business automatically. Server-to-server -server callback codes basically have the same function, just that they work better. This is because server-to-server -server callback codes are not fired via the container in the conversion tracking code, but via the tracking server. Therefore, it is neither dependent on customers' behavior nor the settings in their browsers. Server-to-server -server callback codes will, for example, also be triggered when cookies are blocked. Therefore, a server-to-server -server callback code is far more accurate. And because it is triggered after the rating of the conversion, a server-to-server -server callback code allows partners to receive more information, such as the commission assigned to a transaction and its status. 
The Ingenious Enterprise platform allows partners to combine JavaScript and callback codes. This can come in handy, for example, when your partners want to deal with potential customers who have disabled JavaScript. In case the JavaScript is not working, the image callback code will be triggered nevertheless. To finish this video, let's go through all the different third-party tracking codes once more. We have the JavaScript codes in the container of the on-page code that are fired unconditionally. JavaScript can also be included in the container in the conversion tracking code, which is fired only when a conversion has been made. The container of the conversion tracking code can also be used to implement image callback codes. Finally, server-to-server -server tracking codes are fired by the tracking server, which makes them more reliable. Like we mentioned at the beginning, we discuss how you and your partners can implement all these different third-party tracking codes in a separate video. For now, we hope you enjoyed this one. Best wishes from Berlin and be well.